Hi, I'm Mike Wilkinson. I'm a filmmaker and photographer, and I'm going up Mount Kilimanjaro for the second time in about a week and a half from now. So I thought I'd make a little video blog to cover uh, some of the kit that I'm packing, what I've learned from my previous trip, and how that's modifying my prep for this upcoming trip. And this isn't gonna be about like getting your visa or what kind of training you need to do, how to deal with altitude. There's a dozen other videos for that. This is specific for photographers and filmmakers um, and kit considerations, power considerations, things like that. So let's get to it. So I trekked up Mount Kilimanjaro in 2019 on a film shoot for Natus Films, a film production company out of Louisville, Kentucky. I was one of two camera operators capturing interviews and hiking content for the full trek. I'm recording this video ahead of my next trip coming up in just a few weeks in November of 2021. So having done this before and going through all the motions of prep, again, I thought I may make a short video and hopefully it could help some other photographers and filmmakers out there who uh, might get booked or might be making plans to go up Kilimanjaro. The two biggest questions I think is, what are you gonna shoot and are you going to have power? Yeah, before you can really figure out what gear you're gonna take, you gotta figure out what you're gonna shoot, right? So like what kind of lenses, what kind of camera kit you're gonna need, uh, what kind of tripod support, stabilizers, things like that. You're gonna be really limited going up the mountain, um, probably just whatever you can put into a backpack and then additional kit that you can offload for a porter to haul up for you. The important thing is to not burn out on your hikes up the mountain because uh, most treks are anywhere from five to seven days and you may feel good on day one and day two but if you push it too hard with a heavy pack with a telephoto lens and a tripod hanging off the side of it you're gonna get burned out and then on that third and fourth day like you're just not gonna feel good. You'll most likely have one porter whose sole job it is is to carry your duffel bag up the mountain. And that's not just for your extra camera kit that's gonna be your sleeping bag and your Summit boots and your Summit puffy, whatever additional other supplies you want to have at each camp. Um, and the porters are limited to, I wanna say it's like a 20 kilogram load. So however heavy your boots and sleeping bag and all that stuff is, whatever's left over up to 20 kilos, you could pack with some extra items. Um, so that's what I plan to do is I'll have a few extra lenses, maybe a few other pieces of support equipment, additional batteries, things like that. And then I'm gonna have my porter carry as much of that as possible so that I don't have to carry that on my back when I'm hiking up the mountains and I can spend more of my energy and mental capacity focusing on what I'm filming. In 2019, I carried an F-Stop Gear Loca with a Sony A7 uh, with a couple of zoom lenses, a video mic, and a gimbal, while a porter carried a tripod, audio equipment, portable battery, and a heavy telephoto lens. On this particular uh, assignment, we did have an extra porter for both myself and the DP who was on that project, so we were able to take quite a bit of extra kit. Um, we had a laptop and hard drives and things like that to back up every night. We're not gonna have that on this upcoming shoot. So this kind of leads me to the next thing is, are you going to have power on your trek? Um, some higher end luxury expeditions and guiding services may be able to offer that, whether that's someone pushing a generator up the side of the mountain, literally, or somebody taking like a solar panel kit and a portable battery charger. So if you're gonna have that power, well then you can start taking things like laptops and hard drives and you can start charging big batteries on the fly and you don't have to take that many. In my case, coming up for this uh, shoot here in a couple of weeks, we're not gonna have power. So my plan this time is to take something like a dozen batteries for my Sony A7 and then take a Sherpa 100AC uh, portable battery charger, which is the largest the FAA will let you fly with. Uh, and I did the math and I think I'll get about 10 to 15 battery charges out of that alone. So that should cover me for doing about three batteries a day um, on the hike up for the duration for six days up, one day down. So think about your power needs and how many batteries you're gonna need, uh, how, uh, how many batteries your camera might burn throughout the day, uh, and make sure you're gonna take enough. So here's some more tips that you may not have uh, read about already in doing your research for your trip. Thing number one is leaving stuff at the hotel. So whenever you get into Tanzania or I guess possibly Kenya, you know, you're going to be based out of a hotel for that first day or two before you, you know, hop in a Suburban and go drive up to start your trek. 
uh, everyone leaves a case or a duffel of kit at their hotel to come back to it when they get down off the mountain. So that means if you're doing any filming um, at your hotel or down on the ground or on a safari, you can leave that kit at the hotel. You don't necessarily have to take it with you. But that also kind of gives you an opportunity to maybe weigh your kit on site a little bit and maybe decide, oh, like, I do have space to take this other lens or I don't need to take this big heavy tripod. Um, so yeah, just keep in mind you can stash some kit at the hotel and you don't have to take it up the mountain just because you fly to Africa with it. Managing media in the field. Now, on my previous trip, we had a laptop and we had hard drives and power and all that stuff, so we were able to offload and back up our media every night. We won't have, a, have uh, access to power, and I'm not gonna take a laptop on this trip. Uh, so instead, uh, what I found was the L Lacey Boss, which is like an SSD. It's a one terabyte portable SSD drive with an SD card slot, so you can pop in your card and it'll actually download your footage right there. It seemed like a pretty cool solution, um, and I bought one and tested it out, and it seemed like it was going to be good. And then it just kind of dawned on me, like, why even bother? Um, I have a camera with two SD card slots, and I can do simultaneous recording, so I can get a backup right there while it's rolling, and a dozen SD cards uh, is cheaper, and it weighs less, and doesn't require power uh, relative to that uh, Lacey SSD. So. Yeah, I, I returned the SSD and just rented some more SD cards. So think about how much media you're going to need and what you need to do to back it up uh, on site, obviously. Speaking of backups, uh, rain and dust are probably going to happen on your trip. For this particular shoot, I'm taking a backup camera body. Uh, I'm just going to rent a Sony a7 III and leave it sealed in a bag and have it in the duffel that the porter carries and it's just there in case of emergency in case mine goes down or it gets caught in a rainstorm or dust storm or something like that that way i'm not you know all the way up the mountain on this you know expensive shoot this expensive trip and then i don't have a camera that i that i can shoot with plus if we need a second camera for some reason for either time lapses or a two camera interview or something like that i have the option to throw together this other body put a lens on it and and get that content so the bodies don't weigh that much by themselves, and since I'll have all the media and batteries and lenses and everything for that same body, it seemed to make sense and be worth the uh, cost and the weight. This one should probably be a no-brainer if you've done outdoor adventure shooting like me. Hike with your camera out. You know, you're gonna have time hanging out at camp to run around and do interviews and shoot content and all that, but while you're actually hiking, it kinda sucks to stop unzip your pack, get your camera out, zip your pack back up, put it back on, you know, and now you're behind. Hike with your camera out, come up with a system where you can clip your camera to the outside of your pack and just hike with it. I like these little camera straps that attach to uh, the shoulder straps on a backpack. Um, F-Stop Gear makes some of them. I think Think Tank makes some of them as well. Um, they're super cheap, they're like 15, 20 bucks. Just buy them, they're awesome. If you've researched Killy a little bit, you know like you're gonna hike through a rainforest on your first day or two so chances are you're gonna have some rain um, make sure you get a bomber rain jacket and I would even recommend getting an oversized rain jacket like size it up one one size um, that way so you can hike and you can still have your camera out and you can just like tuck it inside of your jacket you know unzip it put it in your jacket and it's protected from the rain but then as you're hiking around if you see a cool shot you can shoot keep it back keep hiking keep your kit mostly dry, but you can probably get some pretty stunning content. So kit now versus my kit last time, I did make some adjustments. Last time I took a gimbal and I hardly used it. I carried it on a few days and then had the border carry it on a few other days and honestly, it wasn't worth the wait. I just didn't use it that much. Lenses with IS or camera bodies with in-body stabilization, honestly was good enough for what I was shooting. I'm gonna take a small enduro carbon fiber tripod um, with a compact head on it, and it's really not a very good fluid head, but what I realized after my previous shoot was that I didn't need the big, heavy, really smooth pan and tilt head because all, the only time I was ever using my tripod was for lockdowns. I would just do pans and tilts handheld if I wanted like some landscape stuff. So I ditched the heavy head, got myself a cheaper head that's not as good, but it's a quarter of the weight, a quarter of the size. Um, it'll just be much easier to deal with. I didn't have GoPros the last time. We are gonna take those this time around just for a couple extra cameras to put around, give them to some of the hikers, get some cool POV stuff, 
time lapses in the morning, you know, you can kind of set it and forget it. So it'll just be like some extra color footage here and there for the editor. Depending on what you shoot, you probably know this already, but the best footage is gonna come when it's gonna be the hardest to shoot. So when you're sucking for oxygen at 17,000 feet and you're tired, you're not gonna wanna film, but everybody else is gonna be tired. Everybody else is gonna be sucking oxygen. That's good drama. It's gonna be really interesting content. That's when you should film. So maybe just mentally prepare yourself for that. Like the going's gonna get tough, but yeah, like you just gotta kinda suck it up and be ready to get creative and, and get some shots um, because those are gonna be some of the most uh, powerful shots on the, on the hike probably. You know, everybody gets really amped up um, and even some anxiety about summit day. Um, I had a terrible summit day last time. I felt like garbage. Um, so I wasn't alone too and I tried to film, you know, the struggle that other folks were, were having. And then once you get on the summit, like the emotion that pours out of people, so lots of close-ups and having a kit that allowed me to kind of get those close-ups as well as those uh, wide angle shots. I think for this trip, I'm only gonna take two lenses on the summit day. I'm gonna have a 16 to 35 and a 24 to 105. Um, probably shoot a lot of slow motion, lots of close-ups, um, but then also like the big picture stuff of like the line hiking up, getting to the summit. It's, uh, it's physically and mentally, it's gonna be one of the most challenging things you do. Oh, and I should mention too, if you want to film during the summit hike, since you start at night with headlamps out, make sure you have a camera uh, with either a fast lens or some good ISO performance, because obviously it's gonna be super low light, you're in the dark, it's just headlamps. Um, and it looks really cool, but if your camera doesn't handle noise well and you don't have anything faster than like an F4, the footage probably ain't gonna be that great. I'll quickly talk about training and altitude. Um, like I said, I had a terrible summit day. I felt like garbage, about 17,000 feet, it all kind of hit me. Uh, and I'm no slouch when it comes to hiking up mountains um, and, and kind of doing this for work. Um, but altitude is like this great equalizer. Some folks take Diamox, uh, you can read about that. I chose not to. Um, do your own research, talk to your own doctors, figure out how you wanna do that. Um, what I've done this time and why I'm recording this here with this gym behind me is I only found out about this new job about two weeks ago. So I didn't have a ton of time to train. I have a buddy who actually runs and operates an altitude training gym in Michigan. And you can come in and simulate what you would do to go up the side of Kilimanjaro and set the altitude to 10,000 feet or let it run and get up to 14,000 feet and hike on a treadmill or have a workout. And I've been sleeping and working out in here for the last three days and I'm gonna be in here for another three days. Uh, so hopefully when I get to Africa, I'll sort of pre-acclimate it and my body will have already adjusted a bit. I'll have uh, better uh, oxygen saturation. My heart rate will be a little bit lower at those higher elevations. So hopefully when I hit that summit day, I can feel a bit better uh, getting to the top. So I hope that helps. I generally don't check comments on YouTube. Uh, so feel free to find my email and just send me an email if you have questions and maybe I'll post a follow-up if I get a bunch of the same kind of questions. Thanks for checking it out.